The present government is going a long way towards justifying the abolition or uh, significant reform of the current House of Lords. The one bit of the parliamentary estate where you can be sure to get a decent informed debate, the one bit of parliament which actually is doing its job. Now, there may be a lot of questions about uh, whether or not it conforms to a modern understanding of democracy, but democracy is a convention, and it's a convention that has been interpreted anyway. When we are talking of democracy, we're not talking about absolute democracy, we're talking about representative democracy. We vote once every four or five years in the hope that the person that we put into the House of Commons will actually represent us. But we have no we have no uh, control over that person once we have submitted our vote. We may write to that person, and I think that that person is on a bound to write back. It doesn't always happen, of course. And increasingly under this government, both ministers and MPs have found ways of ducking their responsibility, even to the extent of sending off form letters. There, there is, in fact, an entire department that processes information which will go into those form letters. So should you write to your MP about such and such a subject, the relevant paragraph that avoids any form of responsibility is plucked out by uh, this department and sent off to your MP, which is then uh, inserted into the letter you get by response. So that's why very often when you write to your MP, you get completely perverse paragraphs that make no sense, that uh, invite you to talk to such and such a body, such and such an organization that's already said that it's irrelevant and that they have no responsibility. But that doesn't matter. The verbiage is all that matters, as you see in Prime Minister's questions on a Wednesday. But when you listen to the debates in the House of Lords, much of that verbiage is gone. Actually, what you get is a straight question and a fairly straight answer. So the abuse of the House of Lords is particularly to be um, bemoaned because it's that the House of Lords, it's an easy target. And I, I urge you, I urge you before you start writing all your things about the House of Lords is all un unelected and we're electing peers for life and all that sort of stuff, I urge you, Switch on Parliament TV and listen to the debates before you, before you say this. Because here are people who are not looking over their shoulder at their next election. Now, I think there's great ways to reform the House of Lords, and I think there's great ways to ensure that a life peerage comes with the demand that they only serve five years in the actual chamber. I think that would be a really good idea. No more. And no less anybody appointed to the House of Lords undertakes to serve that five years. You can't just have it as some sort of charming sinecure and swish around in the red robes as if you're uh, walking off the set of RuPaul's Drag Race. No. A, an appointment to the House of Lords is an, is an appointment to serve. It's a responsibility before it's an honour. You take the honour after you've left the red benches. And I, I, I think that would be one way forward. And that might guarantee the wealth of debate continues. Because one of the things which is the problem with the House of Commons is everybody's looking over their shoulder at the next election and the next soundbite. I think it has to be written into the appointment of future lords that there's a time limit on their tenure. And that time limit, given the fact that lords are appointed uh, over the years, that time limit will, of course, have a revolving door. And I think there will therefore be <coughs> no, 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 no limit to the number of lords with interesting backgrounds who are there on hand to attend debates and to contribute prop uh, positively. I, I also think 
that the, he, uh, the, the extraordinary election of the small number of life uh, of um, hereditary peers is is a very charming and worthwhile addition because it again puts pressure on the life peers to do their job and to contribute with the, the extraordinary wealth of experience that they've got to this heightened debate and so it, it's with that that I that I want to raise the issue which was raised by Alistair Campbell uh, of Matthew Elliott. <clears throat> Matthew Elliott is one of the people from Tufton Street and he's one of the people who's been promoted by Liz Truss into the House of Lords and uh, the independent body the, the Lords Appointments Commission, a uh, HOLAC, uh, should by rights have pushed him out on the grounds of propriety. It's propriety that they look into. Is it appropriate that this person should be in a Lordship's chamber, a peer, an equal? And somebody who treated the appointments, uh, the, the um, select committee that was looking into the vote leave chaos and deceit uh, who treated them with such contempt and couldn't be bothered to turn up initially and then finally in a desultory fashion turned up it's it's inappropriate that he should ever have been given this um, elevation he will see it as an honour I see it as a responsibility and I think we should uh, given the fact that he's in the House of Lords, I think we should write to him and ask him what responsibilities he now feels that he has to carry out. Uh, that is his, that is his um, job. The, uh, uh, as, uh, as for his links to the um, Political and Economic Research Trust, PERT, uh, the charity he founded in 2006, uh, his political campaigns, um, the grants to organisations that he's associated with, such as the Taxpayers' Alliance, Business for Britain, and so on. I, I, I think there's so many questions that he should be asking and that the House of Lords uh, Appointments Committee, the HOLAC, should have um, considered... Uh, I, I find it extraordinary that he is actually in the House of Lords, but no more extraordinary than Lord Lebedev. Um And I find his appointment so odd because I know people who've written to him and expected a response and got none. And I think, therefore, he's failing in his basic duties. So there we are, Elliot and Lebedev. I expect um, I expect you to carry out your responsibilities now you're in the House of Lords. And if you don't, people should be writing to you and asking, why are you just, uh, why, why are you taking it so easy when you've been appointed to fulfill a job? Why are you taking it so easy?